<laughs> What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Luciano TV. We got a special guest today, my boy, Big Bird. How's everybody doing out there? Make sure you cut. What is your girl saying? Everybody, make sure you go over there. Go over there and hit down there to everybody. Make sure you follow us on this. <laughs> <laughs> Today we making gumbo. Big Bird said he got the crazy recipe for some gumbo, and I never ate homemade gumbo. Never? Never. So I never wow. ate homemade gumbo. Sorry, so, man. That, we're going to put Papa Do's out of business, man. Shrimp, I got I We made it back from the H E B and we got shrimp to peel. Man, I'm doing the peel. Bert doing the hard job. He's doing the dirty work. <laughs> How do you even chop everything up? Like small or medium? Yeah, small. If you can, that'd be great. Well, right now, you know, we put in right now we put in garlic. You first of all melted some butter. Then there's garlic, then we added the onion, and right now we're adding bell pepper. Cut a gene cutting up the bell pepper. Hey, you know what they call that, right? What? With, you don't know what they call the onion, bell pepper, and the salad? What? The Holy Trinity. The Holy Trinity. That's what they call it. Onions, bell pepper, and celery. Yeah. Because that's what goes in the gumbo and gives it all the flavor. This is my roux right here. Right. Looks like yeah. cinnamon. Looks like cinnamon, but it's not. It's baked flour. Is That's it a cheat? Yeah, it is. Because sometimes, man, it takes a while to get the roux right. You mess up the roux, you just ruin it. So all flour. roux is is baked flour. No, it's not. It's oil and flour put together. And pretty much it's like a gravy, but you keep stirring until you get the color that you want. You got to get the right color because there ain't no such thing as like, you got to get it looking like mud. And then we start to add the uh, the sausage, kind of cut the sausage, put it in there. Now what do we got right here? Got some crab, right? Yeah, and then we're going to put the shrimp that in there. The shrimp and the crab bring it last. Nothing's hungry. He's to... like, I don't care about all that. Uh, <laughs> that maybe, uh, I want that. some shrimp and some, some crab. crab. Yeah, so shrimp and some crab meat, man. <laughs> What are, you, what, are you, what are you cutting? Celery. Oh, it's looking good though, man. I'll make a taco out of that. I know, that's what I always say. I just want to get a scoop of it right now and eat it. But right now, man, like I said, onions, bell peppers, celery. Now we got the bouet sausage in there. Cut thin tomato. And then stir it. You can't stir it because, like, the tomatoes in there, you just barely stir it. Let me add, put this one away. Hey, uh, where's the wool at? The wool ain't going to be put in yet. I'll tell you what. Put in another. Put actually three quarts of chicken broth. So now I'm cutting the chicken. I guess we're gonna throw it in there, and then I don't know. Here's my roux. Roux. It's roux or woo? Roux. roux. With, with an R. Yeah. So you put it in there, and, and that's in what there. makes it thick. Mm. Yeah. Okay, we got the fried shrimp and fried chicken going for the kids because they might not like this gumbo over here because it's spicy. But Bert is thickening it up, ain't that right? Yeah, you like it bigger. Thicker, thicker like a snicker. Uh. And then we're gonna throw the crab legs and the shrimp inside. We decided to take over and give it the Lucci Gang twist. Throwing the rice in there and letting it cook. Man, it's smelling good. I got my lemons cut up and ready to go. <laughs> yeah, you know, 
Yeah. All right, we're gonna do the uh, taste tester right here. I'm gonna do the, give you the five star rating. Got some crab. I'm looking for them shrimp. Let me find them shrimp. Like you've been standing over us this whole time, breathing hard, like, ready to on. eat. Let's get it on. That looks delicious. It do, huh? It All needs right. more rice. Big bowl of gumbo, baby. It should have had more shrimp. And that's the finishing results. You didn't really get rice on yours. Shout out to Big Bird. Big Bird know what he's doing in the kitchen. Hold up, Chef Bert. Hey, I didn't get fat for no reason. He didn't get fat for nothing. You stupid, Bert. <laughs> if your chef ain't fat, he don't know what he's doing. That's what I'm saying. I, I can't understand skinny guys. Man. Don't be hating on the healthy ones. <laughs> don't do that. I give it a five star. I ain't even say what's up to y'all. What's up, Luchi Kank? Welcome back to the channel. Today we're eating gumbo. <laughs> Featuring Big Bird. Mmm. All right, let me give y'all my honest opinion about Bert's gumbo. I was skeptical for a moment, for a minute, when he said, let me come over there and make some gumbo. It's like, Bert ain't gonna know how to make no gumbo, man. He gonna just throw some chicken and some sausage in there and boil it up. But man, I tasted it and it tastes delicious good just like you know the restaurant good gumbo great job Bert great job <laughs> so this is Delilah and this is Brenda listen and 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 they've never ate shrimp so we're hold, hold on this we're gonna get their reaction to first time eating fried shrimp okay so you dip it, you already dip it. Wait, you gotta eat it without the ketchup first. The ketchup gonna throw it off. No. Wait, why? No. If it's a first time eating shrimp, you gotta eat it by itself. It's, it's fried shrimp. Okay, you ready? I, Cheers. I've never Cheers. eaten shrimp with a ketchup. You mm. eat it with cocktail sauce, not ketchup. I don't know what to feel. No, you gotta squeeze lemon on it. And it is, it, it does have lemon, babe. No ketchup. Does it taste like chicken? No, it tastes like shrimp. It tastes like chicken to you? Yeah. Oh, she likes it! <laughs> Do you like it? She's like, no. No. Take this no. off my <laughs> It's spicy? It's spicy. I it's, think... the, it's the batter. No. Oh, is it the batter or is it the, the ketchup? ketchup? Oh, oh, and you got ketchup, spicy ketchup. That ketchup threw it off. Success. At least with one. <laughs> we got a 50% mm -hmm. success rate. You were like super calm about it though. She's like, no. <laughs> I think it's good. See, I told you. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was tough, yeah, yeah. Like but it doesn't tough. mean I'm going to eat shrimp all the time. So we stuffed like a pig. <laughs> Bert want to come hear some beats from Elijah. Let's see what he got. guitar is real real confident in the song it has to be able to match sometimes like you got them artists that'll come around doing da -na -na -na, da -na -na -na. you know they'll <laughs> rap exactly to that you know what i'm saying burst bird over here spitting knowledge man bird spitting you know burst the first person to teach me how to uh uh count bars, bars. i didn't even know how to count bars. i used to just make a long raps <laughs> I had my, my, when I make a song, there'd be just long verses everywhere. I was coming. 11 bars. I was like, you need one more. He was like, you know how to count bars? He was like, you got to count. Count to four. That's one bar. One, two, three, four. That's one bar. I remember we were sitting in Charles Chavez's studio. I was like, oh, okay. I got it now. I was going to say, remember this, man, that, like, you know, you. that's why, like, producers are never supposed to mix down songs because they're always going to, like, mix their beat louder and bigger and better than the actual person on the song. So, you know, you're still good though, man. I'll tell you the truth. I'm not one of these parents that be like, oh, my son is so talented. Oh my God. <laughs> but he actually really sucks. You know, I'm not that parent. I'll tell you the truth. 
But actually, man, it sounds good. Now, I was just like, man, I got kids. I need to get my stuff together, you know? You know, I need to get my health together. Cause I'm, yeah, I'm always been a fat boy. And, but I was just like, you know what, man? I need to get my life together. And, and I went through a moment and um, Lucky Ass told me about this book. And, and I lived that book. What was crazy about it, that I had a day of disgust. And literally, it I was going a little crazy. I don't know what anxiety is. But I hear people say all the time, oh, I got anxiety. Oh, I had a panic attack. I don't know what that is. Because I'm always just like, you just got to deal with life. I just literally had the worst day of my life. I was arguing with my girl. I was yelling at my kids. I was yelling at Julio. We had a big argument. I mean, I, I made some people leave. I was just such in a bad state of mind. And I just thought of one person that maybe they, they, they can help me. You know what I mean? And I, I made a call and I said, say, man, what are you doing? And it was, I had to call my boy Lucky. I, you know, usually it was my mama. I would call my mom and my mom would tell me, hey, baby, it's going to be all right. You know, but she wasn't there. And I was arguing with everybody and I called my boy Lucky, man. You know, hey, Luck, what's up, man? And, and I told him what was going on. And then he said, well, look, man, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to put you on this challenge, Bert. You know, he, me, Luck, me and Lucky talked for about 45 minutes and, I started doing this challenge. And the first day, it was raining. I remember I, I got up, even before I checked my phone or checked my email, text messages, I got to my knees and, and I'm, as I'm praying, I pray next to my bed and my little girl sleeps right there. So the whole time I'm just like, you know, thank you Lord, man, for everything. Please bless me and just, man, make all this just go away. Cause I was just, it was so much pressure on me. And it wasn't a pressure like, oh my God, you know, being a dad, no, no, no. It was something else. And I don't know what it was, but it was just ruining my days. And I knew who that was. And it was, you know, the devil. I always felt like that. And the first day I did it, the first day I hit to my knees and I prayed. And then I put my little hoodie on, my gray hoodie. I put my, I, I, it was weird that at that time, even when I was walking, I couldn't even listen to certain music that I would listen to whenever I would exercise. You know, I would listen to Iron Maiden and heavy metal music and dirt, you know what I mean? Shout at the devil and all that. I, I felt myself like I couldn't even listen to that anymore. So I took my headphones off and the whole time I'm just talking to God. Hey God, man. Like, like if I, he was right next to me. And uh, I did my walk and I came back and then I did the bit I read and, and, you know, the book that, you know, he told me to read. And I, at that time, I, I don't know why, but I felt so awake. Like I was awake, you know, like, like, you know, usually you're groggy in the morning and I didn't feel that. And I did that for 21 straight days. I wasn't also no carbs. I wasn't drinking any sugars, no coffee, no cigarettes, no of course, I don't smoke weed. And I wasn't doing nothing. I was just drinking. The most I drink was iced tea with some sweet and low. And I know everybody who's been following me, man, they know I've been, I do that. And I mean, I was eating right and everything. So I went through this whole 21 days, you know what I mean? And I was telling people, hey, man, look, I'm not the same person I was even 10 days ago or five days ago or now three weeks, or now four or five weeks. But a lot of, you know, after that, I, you know, some things came knocking. And um, I called, I called, I called Lucky again and said, dude, like, and then that's when he told me, man, look, right now you're living right. So there's going to be things, knocks that, you know, that, you know, the devil going to try to come get you again and do this and do that. And he, that's why after that, I went on the 30-day challenge. And that's what I'm doing still. But during all this, and it wasn't even the, now it's like a week ago, a week ago Friday, I had a heart attack. And I had a, a pain in my chest, but I've had that pain before, but it was um, gallstones, gallbladder stones. So that's all I thought it was. And I was just like, 
Oh my God, man! I'm gonna if I go back, I'm gonna have to stay there. Now I'm scared of all this COVID nineteen stuff, and I was just I don't want to go to the hospital. They're gonna make me be alone and everything. And so I beat it. I just man, go, it would go back, go back, take a painkiller, go away, and for a little bit, come back. But that morning it was my girl's birthday, and her dad was coming in, which I love her dad to death. And I'm sitting there like with my chest just man, it was hurting, and then it was the pain was coming all the way to my ear. It was hurting my shoulder, and I was just like, I got in the car. My girl was telling me, "You need to go to the hospital. You need to go to the hospital." But I told her, "I don't want to go. I'm scared." So, on, I, and then Julio's like, "What's up, man? You good?" And I said, "Nah, man. I think I need to go to the emergency room." And he was like, "What?" I said, "Yeah." So on the way to the emergency room, I just told him, "Nah, man. Let's go to work. Let's go to work." I don't need that shit. You know, let's just go. Nah, man. He called my girl, and they started talking. The next thing you know, Julio said, nah, bro, you need to go to the hospital. So, yes, Julio Sanchez saved my life. Because after being in the hospital, the lady told me if it would have been another 35, 45 minutes, I would have died. I had the heart attack on Friday, so they weren't going to be able to do the procedure until Monday. And I was like, then at this time, I'm by myself. My girl can't come see me, my kid, nobody. All I am is just phone calls and video, just looking at my kids. And every nurse that I had, they ended up knowing me because I was scared that I was going to die. So I, if my wife would have came in and talked to any of those nurses, they would know that about my wife and my kids. And how thankful I was to have them. But man, dude, like, you don't understand. I think that I'm alive still because of my journey that I've been taking. I have a feeling if I would have not been on this journey for the past five weeks before my heart attack, I don't know if I would have made it. Because everything was just working so good. It was like I was winning and winning and winning and getting blessings and all this, you know what I mean? Like, it was just, everything was happening right. So I think that my, the heart attack was just like, okay, but I survived it and I'm, I'm here today. But it's now I feel like, you know, somebody pulled the blinds down even more. They were already open, but now they're just totally gone. Like, but I think like the whole, my, my journey I've been taking, my 21 day challenge. Now I'm on my 30 day challenge and Proverbs and- And and, and praying every and, day. And I pray every day. I It's been hard for me to get on my knees now, but I still pray. But I don't think I would have made it if I would have been living the same, you know? So I just want to say, you know, lucky. Lucky and Julio and my girl, they saved me. And that's why, like, even today, like, you have your friends, you know what I mean? And then you got your circle, you know what I mean? So I my, my circle, you know, and of course, you know, I got my boys, Baby Bash and Stewart Brothers and, you know, my boy Ro, my boy Dapper, you know, there was very few people who knew what was really going on, you know what I mean? And and sometimes those people knew more than even my family, you know what I mean? But I, that weekend was the most horrible weekend of my entire life because I did not, I was all worried about, man, my girl's birthday. You know, then I was like, man, I'm going to miss Halloween because me and my kids, we all dress up. I didn't want to miss none of that. That's what I was just like, man, dude, like I can't go now. I don't want to do that. God, please, man. I don't want to die. Please. And so the procedure went and they don't knock you out. You're, you're alive, but you can't really like, you're like, you're like, you're so like you're body's asleep but you can still look and everything and he went in there and did his thing and da 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 da, da. you know I'm gonna show you something but don't trip out like <laughs> like I got to where you know I'm bruised up you know uh -huh. when he did the procedure 
But as he was doing it, he was talking to me and he said, hey, you good. And he, I, I don't know, like, like, but he was kind of like, I'm not saying he was hood, but he, he told me, hey, we good, man. He went like this, he pulled out this big old thing out of my leg. He said, man, you're good, Mr. Trevino. You good, go to sleep. I took care of it. I'm gonna be in your room, go to sleep. And when you wake up, I'm gonna go in there. I'm gonna talk to you about it. I ended up like going home and I remember the first people I saw was my girl and, and my father-in-law and you know, I was, you know, I went home and it was crazy. I got a cane now, you know what I mean? I gotta have the cane, but it's gonna go away soon. But my girl, Julio and Lucky, if it wasn't for those three people, I don't think that I would be here making gumbo with Lucky. But I think somebody knocked on my door and said, hey, this is just a warning. You need to take care of yourself. And, you, you know, like I said, I, um, Lucky helped me open the blinds. But, and then now they're, they're totally down to where I know that there's a higher power. Because he could have took me. But he said, nah, you know what? He needs to chill. He's got a family. I want him to see more. But I just had to remind him get right now what you know what i'm saying so thanks lucky already man shout out to big bert he held in there for his 28 day challenge 21 21 day challenge it's 20 it takes 21 days to form a habit and 90 days to form a new lifestyle so now he is on 90 days you know what i'm saying praying reading Walking. Well, I don't know if he can go walking in the morning. Well, no. Right now, what I do is I walk up and down the hallway of my house. Something, man. It's be something, man. <laughs> so, hey, I'm thinking about starting a class. Not a class, like a boot camp. A boot camp. Y'all let me know. Type in the comments. Let me know if y'all be interested in joining the challenge. Because I believe I got the formula not only for success, but for happiness, peace, and just, you know, having having a walking in harmony. You know what I'm saying? And it's it's all about putting God first being healthy and giving thanks, being thankful, you know what I'm saying? Being grateful and focusing on your dreams and your goals, you know what I'm saying? And accomplishing them, really overcoming yourself and being disciplined and disciplining yourself, you know what I'm saying? And that's what it is. I know it worked for me, so I know it could work for other people. It's obviously working for Bert. So I know it could work, you know what I'm saying? Personal development and self-discipline is the key. So y'all stay tuned, man. You watching Luciano TV. And before I go, I want to give a birthday shout out to Carlos turning 37 years old and Nico turning 12 years old. We appreciate y'all for watching. Stay tuned.